What's up, guys? Welcome to our analysis of Ubisoft's E3 2017 press conference. I'm Tim Geddes, as always, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hi. And joining me, once again, Candy Andy himself. Candy. Andy I'm still here. He's I still guess. here. We haven't kicked you out yet. Yeah, I guess. This is, uh, this is an exciting time. We just finished the conference. Some big surprises. Yeah. A lot of... Uh, Little things? I don't know. There, there was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. What's the, the what's the takeaway? What are we feeling? I am I, well, I'm, I'm left I, I, mystified. I'm left mystified by this Beyond Good and Evil 2 thing at the end here. I thought it'd be, hey, here's the Beyond Good and Evil 2 trailer. The internet went aflame as you'd expect it to. And then you expect, look for it this year. We fucked around with this before. We know you've been waiting. We're here to deliver. And they didn't do that. They're like, help us make the game kind of thing. And it was like, so you're, and I, I, I tweeted this. I'm like, look forward to playing this game in the 2020s. Maybe. Like what I mean, like what Maybe. I don't understand I, I, where this game is in production. I do not believe this game is any more real now than I did an hour ago. And that's yeah. upsetting to me. I do the thing where I'm trolling forever, the internet. But the, the, the last time we Looking saw a CG trailer of Beyond Good and Evil 2 was in 2008 at the Ubisoft conference. That's yeah. insane. That is such a long time ago. And the Beyond Good and Evil 1, amazing game. Never played. It's great. It's fantastic. But this is at this point it's going to be it's a totally different game right like this is so, this is something new i like that they're going for a prequel because that's kind of a great jump on point for people that haven't played the original mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. but the problem is greg's absolutely right they can't come out show another cg trailer despite how cool that looked because it yeah. looked really cool love the world i mm -hmm. like i'm getting a lot of saga vibes from it sure so that's sure. that's really cool I, it, very interesting it's a prequel didn't yeah. expect that i like that idea that's cool but you can't show that. You earlier you brought up that it's this is similar to the Final Fantasy VII uh, remake announcement. I disagree. I think it's more similar to bringing back Last Guardian again, where mm. we all we knew what it was and it kind of died for a long time. And it's, will it won't it ever come back? Type situation. We all wanted it to finally come back, but when it came back, there was a date. Yeah, a let date me let me stick. just read you. This is off of Ubisoft's official YouTube page. They've put up their Beyond Good and Two trailer breakdown here, and then they say about Beyond Good and Evil Two. Journey to System 3. For the prequel, it's one of Ubisoft's most beloved games. Fight alongside unforgettable characters in a stunning new solar system as you struggle for freedom and the right to determine your own fate among the stars. Play the adventure by yourself or with friends in a vast and seamless online playground. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is the spiritual successor to the cult classic, a prequel that will transport players into a profoundly multicultural world, capturing the spirit of the original with grandiose decors and intense dramas that play out across the vast universe. A vast universe through the space monkey program ubisoft montpellier will be de developing this the game alongside its community of fans so the, the, the development is ongoing and that's what they're telling you to join space monkeys yeah. to give your feedback system three has become the center of the interstellar trade and has become the center of interstellar trade and the colonization in the milky way of the 24th century thanks to the creation of hybrid slaves while private enterprises fight over resources and power the first colonists weave together the rich and diverse spiritual and cultural heritages of old earth to give meaning to their existence in this new era of piracy we will rise from lowly pirate from the lowly pirate to legendary captain at the helm of massive star faring vessels adventuring alongside crews of colorful characters to fight for freedom and the right to determine our own fate among the stars. Here was a period. That's here it. was a fucking bad, uh, a bad example of like, or a telltale sign that this game's not coming out for several several years. Yeah, is the fact that like when they were on stage talking about it, behind, behind you them, concept art. Well, behind you, you saw yeah, you saw like some motion graphic concept art stuff, but you also saw like, like them in the engine moving around a scene with like a free a free flying camera. And that's just like typical stuff you see. Like it's like, man, this game's far away, man. It, it's just not a good sign at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. It's upsetting because like it's so hard when it comes to E3. It is about the hype and it is about excitement. And I feel like we grade a lot of these conferences in different ways. Like we were talking about Bethesda last night. We we were upset and the internet's upset that there wasn't any surprises. There wasn't any like one more thing, big moment. But then when we get this, it's like it's so easy to mess up the landing of those big moments and sure. i feel like when you don't nail it 100 percent of the way through it ends up being disappointing and it's there's more people talking about how they're upset than people talking about how excited they are mm, yeah and it sucks i feel like that's kind of ubisoft's conference in a nutshell and that's how it's been the last couple of years where i look down this list i'm like these are some great announcements there's a lot of really great games in there but when you present it in such a a lazy old school way it's just not exciting and it's not fun 
And I, I definitely think that there's a problem with their with how they deliver it. I also I missed Aisha Tyler not being there because sure. she at least kind of gave context to this whole thing being ridiculous and added enough quips that it's like, all right, cool, at least someone's in on the joke. Whereas most of it just kind of felt like let's get as many people on stage to uncomfortably talk as possible. I didn't think it was a bad conference. I thought it was a step up from last year. Last year was a major, like, what the fuck are you doing? Where it was, all right, cool, trailer, talk about it, more gameplay or whatever the fuck it was going to be. I thought it was weird right now over on the UB stream, they're, they're actually doing the playthrough of Assassin's Creed Origins. I thought it was weird to jump out to the outside, show off screen of them playing and then tease to come back. I understand you want people to come back to your stream or whatever. I would like to have seen this during the conference. This looks awesome. I'm into Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, it was a, you're right. It was a very traditional conference, I guess, in a way. And like the yeah. things looking back at it, like stand out to me, right? Like I thought Mario and Rabbids, like I hate the Rabbids, just don't like their characters. I never have. Uh, but when I got, when it finally got to gameplay, not them walking, I was like, oh, it's XCOM. Okay. That's interesting enough. Crew two didn't do much for me. Adding in, become the motorsport champion, whatever. South Park, of course I love transference. I, I was like, that sounds cool. Seems cool. But then it was like, we saw nothing, and I understand you can't. Sh what, what's yeah. that? How do you show a game like that? But Spring it's also 2018, like, a little too far away for it being that far away. Why? Yeah, I understand you're working with Elijah Wood. You want to do that, but just cut me a really cool trailer that scares me or whatever. Skull and Bones, I thought started for me personally really high and then fell off. Where it was like you know so many jokes kids have been tweeting back at me of like, yeah, it looks like you wanted more Black Flag. Well, now you're the ship. Like that's what it's. Uh, is that what it is? That's what it kind of gives off the vibe of. Like, are we a pirate that gets off the ship and does stuff, or are we just in controlling our ship and that's our class and that's our character and we do and smash it up stuff and stuff like that? Just Dance, they got out of real quick. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Quickest they ever have. I, I liked how short that that showing was. Yeah, South Park uh, Phone Destroyer. Okay. Yeah. Cool yeah. surprise. Sure. Uh, you like Starlink Battle for uh, Starlink? Battle yeah, for I thought Atlas. it looked interesting. I mean, it. I mean, it's more of like the the ten year old version of Andy. Like, holy fuck, I would love this shit if I were a kid. Sure, it's something that I'll probably fuck around with on Switch. Uh, yeah, it looks fairly interesting. They got into Steep, which I wasn't expecting them to yeah, talk about I mean, the expansion I mean, pass. So, I mean, even go back to Starlink Fall twenty eighteen. There was a lot of Fall twenty eighteen games right. uh, in this lineup, which was interesting. And, and there was a lot coming this year as well. Uh, the crew, no, er, even the crew early twenty eighteen. We already knew Assassin's uh, release date was October twenty seventh, but uh, Mario and Rabbids August twenty ninth. That falls right in line with the August to September release date that mm, all the leaks mm, were talking about. Yeah, um, I'm happy the Switch is getting more games this year. Um, but yeah, and then then Steep was like, okay, whatever. But then yeah, Beyond Good and Evil too. Like, man, that looked really damn cool, and I am super excited for that if it ever actually happens. Uh, but I don't believe that it will. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing is that game seems so far off. I don't know. It's just it was a weird conference. I I think Far Cry the demo they showed for Far Cry I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I really do want to play this. The I, only thing I didn't love about it, I didn't love the this sort of comical vibe that the trailer had that the gameplay trailer had. I wish it was more sort of ominous crazy religious cult thing like yeah. it, it became like really fun and like yeah, bum, 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 bum. Bum. yeah this is my problem when i fought when i saw far cry 5 at judges week and they gave the thing they gave a very serious like this is what it is there's a cult taking over town blah blah blah. and then they showed the gameplay and it was far cry gameplay yeah. running around being crazy and it's like it is that weird juxtaposition of how serious the story is going to be versus what it's going to be. Yeah. How you're going to actually run through and play and hit people with baseball bats and boom, 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 and have your friends join in and run them over with crop dusters. And It's like, you know, I enjoyed, again, I keep going back to like the true detective sort of vibe. It's very serious and very scary. And, you know, the this crazy religious cult is sort of, you know, going crazy in this town. But then it's like, hey, it's a it's a buddy cop movie with The Rock and Zac Efron, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. this vibe. Like I, I didn't love that trailer. A whole That's lot. gonna be hard I for them to up. walk that line. But I think if they get away a little bit from trying to make the cult super serious, they will. Mm -hmm. Like the father being all tatted up, right, and having a machine gun, like finding people with the impaled with the cross or whatever. It's like okay, I th I, I think the more we get into it, when you start playing it, hopefully that there'll actually be a tone to it that makes sense for a while. So the, him happening. singing Amazing Grace with the rifle in his hand yeah, on that yeah. altar was just like, oh my god, they're fucking nailing this shit. And then when they got into the more fun, comical stuff, I just, I, it kind of lost me. Mm. Sure. Still sure. want to play it, though. Yeah, I liked how much time they spent on South Park. You know, yeah. just remind us that yep, we're excited exactly. for it, and that there is finally a release date that I believe they'll stick to this time. Um, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, looking through this, though, like, there, Damn. there's nothing that I'm super, super stoked for besides South Park um, that's coming this year. Um, uh, I, the uh, BGE game dot com is crashed, of course, because so many people are trying to hit it up. I'm getting it r roughly loaded, but it says join us, participate, inspire, play, join the space monkey program and take part in the adventure of developing beyond good and evil Two. <laughs> 
Take part in developing the game. I don't mm. like that. What great. I'm trying wrestling. to open this other one that is. The Shout out, though. Uh, we were talking about this throughout the conference. Shout out to Ubisoft's graphics packages and set. I thought they did a great job mm -hmm. of really identifying their brand with the different games yeah. and making the, their new, showing off their new logo as much as possible. But I, I enjoy that type of stuff because it shows that they put thought into it. Bethesda nailed it last night with the whole Bethesda Land thing. So yeah. I'm happy that they, they there is steps being took to not be as generic as uh, this kind of came off and as EA continues to come off. Sure. Uh, but this well, was a lot better than last year where they didn't do the thing where, okay, we're going to keep showing the game over and over and over where here's a trailer, then we bring someone else to talk about it, then we show the gameplay of it. It's like, but I mean, I think this was a bit more focused. You know, a great example of like what you're talking about. So like, let's go through, right? Like Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. It was cool to have Miyamoto on stage, of course. Went on a bit too long, then we got in, started boring, then it got a little interesting with the gameplay, and then put the trailer, right? So right there, I think it was just out of order in terms of how you yeah. should have presented that. Assassin's Creed Origin, here's the trailer, you want to watch the demo, watch later, and it was awkward to watch it off screen, so that was awkward. Crew 2, guy came out, or I'm sorry, they showed the trailer, and you're like, oh, they're introducing this, and it was a cool trailer, like Inception, everything's wrapping around, you're like, alright, cool. Then it was like another weird not trailer trailer, where it was like the splits, like they had all the different cuts of like the different, uh, it's a car, it's a plane, it's a whatever, and then going in and out of it, it's like, I would have rather seen straight gameplay there of telling me what this is and how this all works, and am I racing or am I in the open world, but okay. And that, I think Crew 2 is the one for me that like, I was interested in Crew 1 when they announced it, and when I originally played it, and then when it came out, it was just, you know, it didn't come together. Crew 2, this one should have been a slam dunk in terms of we've taken your feedback, we've listened, here's a mission on land, a mission in the air, we've showed you what this game's going to be. Rather than make it look like you're also racing on tracks, but you are still driving across the country, but you are still flying across the country. That's the, I think, that's one of those weird, and one of the weird presentation issues there. Yeah. yeah. Part, but also, it fine. wasn't clear there if it's like, in the trailer it looked like there's planes flying and racing the cars, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I doubt that's what exactly. it's going to be. Transference was weird. Skull and Bones was weird. Again, awesome trailer followed up by this demo of like, oh, this wasn't what the trailer looked like. And I thought when you talked about it being, you know, this, Just Dance was fine, but it's the usual thing. I guess that's the thing is like, I mean, when I go through these things part by part, there's so few that they nailed. I think they nailed South or Far Cry 5. I think they nailed Beyond Good and Evil 2 till they came out and were like very awkward they should have had a message there of we're developing it and we're targeting this it's going to be a while it or they seems like the system it seems like on. it's fucking six months into development if they're asking for assistance from fans or whatever like that's that's awful messaging i don't like that yeah it's it's, it's pretty bad also i'm a little sad we didn't see any old uh ips revived we also didn't hear anything about um the rayman definitive edition or anything like that i'm sure it'll be a throwaway thing tomorrow's nintendo direct but yeah yeah overall i mean it Good conference, decent conference, but not nothing special. The problem at all. is they just didn't nail enough. Yeah. There weren't enough. I mean, I'm talking on, a, on an announcement presentation level. There weren't enough ten out of tens. Yeah. Like one by one. Every every everything we just went through. I think there was a, something that was a little bit off, with yep. the exception of a few. Yeah, and I mean, it, despite not sticking the landing, it, there, it had to get high moment. Beyond Good and Evil was yeah. there. For sure, no for one sure. Thought, but it was empty. Yeah, and well, it's because it was because it seems like it's more empty promises for a game that has been, has been locked into empty promises and been a joke for so long, right? Yeah, man. I feel mumblings honestly, guys, of beyond, this, this is IGN.com. Mumblings of Beyond Good and Evil 2 started service nearly a decade ago and have yeah. continued throughout the years. It's crazy. This E3 has been very interesting because going into it, I was super excited. I thought that there was going to be a lot of megaton announcements and just big surprises and huge things going. And like now that we're almost done with it, I'm a little disappointed. It's been good. There's nothing. Nothing's been bad or horrible, but it's just kind of all right. We'll see what Big Daddy Sony cool. gives us later. Yeah, and that's my thing. Sony, the last couple of years have been the ones to really blow my mind. And Nintendo are always the ones to that I'm most hyped for and then most disappointed by. So we still have them left. And at the end of the day, no matter what, we're getting Mario Odyssey. So at least there's some good to look for <laughs> from uh, Nintendo. Sure. So, An uh, interesting E3. It a is. A year of tempered expectations. Or what yeah. should have been tempered expectations. But that's right. the thing. Can Sony pull it off for that they the three Pete? The thing with Sony, right, is that if I think their biggest problem will be tonight that they are going to come out, you assume, and talk about so many things we know about. Let's talk about God of War. Let's talk about Detroit. Let's talk about Spider-Man. Let's talk yeah. about it. And like, where are your announcements? Is Sucker Punch going to be the next announcement? Last year was all the unknown stuff. And yeah. now it's going to be, if you come out and you talk about Spider-Man, you talk about being like the way to steal, to make those into big announcements is to say, God of War release date this. Spider-Man yeah. release date this. This is the way At least this. release season. Sure. Yeah. yeah we yeah, need a couple dates, but I, I, I'll even be fine with spring 2018 for mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. of them. Anyways, you guys, we'll be back later for the Sony press conference. We'll be back for the pre-show at... 
five thirty? Is that right? I can never. We never look ahead. Sounds right. I'm just here all day. I know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, five thirty is the mm-hmm. pre-show for PlayStation. We'll be back. Uh, get hyped. Go to YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games for all of our reactions and stuff to different content. And we'll see you guys later. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for Bye. the support. Love you.